pleasure to introduce uh, Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands, the UN Secretary General's Special Advocate for Inclusive Finance for Development. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to welcome you in this very busy time, certainly you, Secretary General, uh, with all your bilaterals and all your interventions to make time for this very important issue, to celebrate the success of the last 10 years, but also to discuss the challenges that are lying ahead. In the last 10 years, I have seen the power of financial inclusion. In Nigeria, Nwakafor Agnes told me three years ago that after enrolling in a new digital health insurance scheme, not only she was able to get health for her whole family, but she could now save on a mobile health wallet. In Indonesia, I met Masken, who ran a food stall, and after starting to work with Gojek online ordering app, not only he had access to more clients, but it allowed him instant payments through his phone, which reduced costs, increased efficiency, and gave him access to credit to grow. And in Bangladesh, I met Isu Hassan, who had a dream to commercialize her grandmother's hair oil recipe. With the help of ShopUp, not only she got a loan quickly, but she also got back office and online administration help and access to markets. Today, Isu has a booming business, employs a lot of people, and bought a house for her parents. And there are millions of success stories like these. We have made great progress, from less than 50% to 70% of the world's adult population being financially included during at least the last eight years. But why is financial inclusion so important? Financial inclusion is not an end in itself, but it is a means to increase family income, improve nutrition, increase access to health, improve education, empower especially women, allows affordable clean energy, as well as water sanitation, and it creates jobs. Basically, it is about including people in the economy, and it is giving them a tool to have a better future. Now, all these successes needed a lot of collaboration this last year. First of all, from governments and their leaders, they are essential to change policies and regulations and investments to allow this. Second, our group of friends, which you just mentioned, I'm a reference group of advisors who have pushed, supported, made research, and followed up in all the country visits that we've actually done and have been so action-oriented. I would like to say thanks to the World Bank here and to the Gates Foundation, Melinda, that you're here today. Also, the private sector leaders who have realized that this is not only the right thing to do, but the smart thing to do. They are the ones that are going to be providing scale. So happy that Dan and Ajay are here with us today. And then we have the global standard setting bodies who realized that financial stability and integrity alone makes no sense if it is, if it is only enjoyed by 20% of the population. And all of you here, it has been an honor to collaborate with so many of you present here. Lastly, I want to thank my office for your great, great work the support of my friends, my husband, and my whole country. Having said all of this, and thank you all, the reality is the work is not yet finished. We still have, like you just said, 1.7 billion people to go. And technology presents today our best chance to reach these people by scaling quickly, reach them affordably, and reach them with better products. Better products that both in developing and developed nations can help us decrease inequality, increase growth, improve financial health for segments of the population, help us tackle issues such as climate change and adaptation, and increase transparency across the board. The challenges are that these new technologies present new risks like cyber attacks, data privacy, dominating super platforms hindering competition, and exclusion that could be created by algorithms. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to do all of this, we have to remain committed to allow these innovations to happen while at the same time addressing these new risks. Dialogue between regulators and innovators 
and creating public goods to address these new risks is essential. Financial literacy and consumer protection will be key to protect the less empowered from fraud and over indebtedness in the new digital credit world. We also need to continue to seek better solutions for the hard to reach segment group, to, to, to the hard to reach groups, like you just mentioned, the women, the micro, small and medium sized enterprises, and the farmers and the rural. Lastly, we need to think beyond access and more of financial health. We need services of good quality that meet people's financial needs, protect them against shocks, and help them plan for a brighter future. I thank you, Secretary General, for your trust, for your support. It has been a wonderful journey so far. Thank you. Thank you again, Your Excellency. Thank you, Your Majesty, Queen Maxima.